episode three. Return of the Force. I'm back. How about <laughs> to freedom? <laughs> freedom. 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 Fine. Mine's too hot to drink. Did you push the button, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> so, like we said in episode two at the end. Episode two. <laughs> yeah. This is episode three, Danny. It reminds me of Star Wars. I'm sorry. I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> What's episode three called? The Return of the Sith? I don't know. Long ago and far away. E- episode three, that's that's um, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the that's Sith. That's right. Yeah. This you is... should know this shit, Katie. You love Star Wars. I do, actually. Yeah. I like Star Wars. So, as we <laughs> said at the end of episode two, the big question Luke was <laughs> trying to get the Death Star. Or Luke, Luke wasn't in episode two. Oh, yeah, it was. Son. No, he wasn't. He was in episode four, okay. five, and six. All right, go okay. ahead. I'm episode sorry. Oh, two. We got retcon. Jeez. Man. <laughs> the best thing. <sighs> Would you push the magic <laughs> button to end the state right now? Well, Luke Skywalker did. Luke Skywalker did it. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He Why? said two torpedoes in the Death Star and blew up. <laughs> but he didn't end the state. There was the Republic. He just ended hey. the way. Like, Why the wouldn't... I'm talking about ending the concept of statism on Earth. Why wouldn't you okay. push the button? We need context so, to the question. Are you talking about deleting people's psychological issues ooh. or deleting just like a few... Buildings that are majestic looking. Just answer the goddamn question, Danny. <laughs> I'm talking about ending the state so that it never comes back. Would you do it if the push of a button, if there was a magic like genie button? Would Given you push current it? affairs. Yeah. The way the world is right now. I would. Probably not. I would definitely push the button. Yes. I was, yes. Don't get me wrong, I would we've, like to. We've got three much. button pushers. The way you're dressing it up, it Let's makes have it a sound belt. like there's no strings attached. So what are some of these strings? Down. Well, there's a tons of strings. There's tons of strings. Well, there's all kinds saying, of calamity that'll happen, but I would push it anyway. One of the examples... That if you example, have no faith in the free market and the anarchy, then I guess... Well, yeah. there's another problem um, that I think Steven Pinker made a valid point on. Oh, Pinker. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He was an anarchist, and mm-hmm. I think his reasoning is rather flawed on this because it's just one anecdote yeah. um, and very specific circumstances. Um, suddenly, the state just drops away yeah. in a crowded environment. Um, what resulted was rioting. So the problem with Pinker. In Montreal, I believe it was. Oh. Yeah, I doubt it. So th- there well, definitely is a... Oh. Pretty significant possibility that if you push the button, that there would be some bad stuff that happens at first. You never saw the purge. <laughs> purge is not anarchy. <laughs> I love that. so I, judgmental. I believe, I believe that it was well deserved judgment, Katie. You judge. I haven't even said anything. <laughs> it was on your face. The body language is what percentage of communication. I believe people step to the plate when given responsibility. Yes. That. Almost everybody steps to the plate. People do what they have to do. Well, and that's why the yeah. state, that's why welfare is such an evil thing because people do what they have to do. I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning half the time if I didn't have to go to work. I mean, it's just the, like you don't you do token. what you have to do. Necessity well, is why the are mother you of invention. About yourself? No, but by the same time, <laughs> that type of that type of reasoning can be used to justify. Um, being a thief or harming people. What type of reason? Uh-uh. Where, need. Where, no. y- need, yeah. No, well, I didn't say need. People s- step to the plate and but do it. What we're saying is that... Take responsibility for themselves be- if they have to. People believe that the only way to have the roads paved right now is to have the state do it. But, or, different example. I have an actual live example that happened in, in real life. People believe that it was the government's job in Detroit to put up streetlights. But the government of Detroit is failed. And they were going, businesses were going a long time without the streetlights working in front of their businesses. They held off a long time before they did anything about it. But eventually, these businesses (laughs) put in their own streetlights in front of their business. Now, 
this probably would have happened a lot faster if the state had been gone. Because these I businesses disagree. were holding out for hope that one day the city's going to come in and they're going to put these lights in. We just have to keep asking them. We have to keep getting at them. We have to keep writing letters to the mayor. Um, I, I'm sure that this went on. But eventually they're, they finally came to the realization that either A, we're never going to get these lights in front of our business, or B, it's going to take another couple of years and we need these lights. And once that change of mindset happened, they put in their own lights. I don't know if I agree with that in them. totality. No, it's fine. The reason why is because um, I had mentioned before, when uh, maybe a few weeks ago, driving home from work, there was a blackout in a part of the area where I live in. Yeah. And there was about four stoplights I have to go through to get home. Mm-hmm. Um, four, all four had failed. Yeah. And what ended up happening, and most of these, you know, they're intersections are four ways and three ways. Um, people took turns. People would just sit there and it, the traffic actually moved much more smoothly and quickly and consistently rather than having large, um, uh, backups. So to me, I don't think a business would re- would, would, would sit there maybe if they're, if that's what they're accustomed to, but Honestly, people seem to have an understanding of, um, a general understanding of what we take turns. Mm-hmm. I and do. Yeah. I like driving in like bad areas of Detroit sometimes because especially at night, I just treat red lights as a suggestion. <laughs> you know, I, oh, that I stop or slow down quite a bit and it, Stop Make sure there's funny. nobody around, but yeah, and then I just go. It, you know, <laughs> that's the one good thing about Detroit. I used to always say the good thing about living in Detroit is the, the police never bother you, and the bad thing is they never bother the criminals either. But <laughs> that's the one nice thing about driving around yeah. in Detroit. Although, so you brought up an interesting topic with the traffic lights in Acapulco. The police went on strike, and when that happened, everybody started to treat red lights like yield signs. They started to make up their own rules for traffic because there was no force of the state to instill these rules and traffic actually flowed better during the strike. That's exactly and then the people did saying. not want right. the strike to end. But we're all saying, yeah. Yeah, I think you're, you just came around and agreed with us is what happened. What, what, what needs to happen, <laughs> there has to be a certain zeitgeist in the environment where a police force riots or the government breaks down. Yeah. Like, if that zeitgeist is something hostile, like, say, the Seattle protesters or how the Black Lives Matters people are starting to get, um, then you're going to see rioting. But if it's just normal, everyday people, then it's more likely to be, it's more likely to have spontaneous order. I think, I think rioting is more, more a result of the state. It's more of a result of irresponsibility, which was, I don't know, bred through through the state, you know. You people, may have looting, though, uh, at first. Yeah, I think at first it, it appeared to me like when, uh, you know, Russia, the Iron Curtain and that kind of came down, it seemed like some of those countries and even Iraq, it seems like a lot of countries that were really controlled when they first get a little more freedom or a lot more freedom they they do go tend to grow a little crazy but i've noticed this you know many times that if people you know in my work sometimes people will be just you know and working and then they'll be the boss on the next job and it's like you know the guy seems like a pretty lazy working and then when they make him the boss it seems really responsible you know and i in mexico i've noticed you know, going to the fiestas and, you know, Jesus Maria, where my ex-wife lived, there'd be like 10, 20,000 people there. You know, in a, five, in a real small town, there's like 20,000 people getting super drunk, and I've never seen any fights and stuff, and it's just like they're used to it. So, you know, like in Europe where the kids get to drink in the bars and stuff when they're young, and it's – if you have the if you have the freedom, then you automatically – understand and take the responsibility what happens is 
people that are very controlled, when they first get freedom, they tend to go a little crazy or, or in a controlled society or system, people are so used to being controlled. So every time they, they feel they got an out, they just get a little stupid and crazy. So I think, you know, yeah, if the state went away tomorrow, there might be a little bit of uh, bloodshed, chaos. Eh. Not that much. I think I, I think it would level out to be out less. Top. What? What happens if the looters come out on top? I don't think that would happen. How are they going to come out on yeah, top? They're not. They, you Maybe have to produce. Is. Who's going to produce? Yeah. 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 People will defend their property once they right. realize the state's not going to do it for them. People it's just like the thing with the, the traffic lights, the, the, um, um, the street lights. Um, once, once the government isn't in their mind as a solution to their problems it's immediately going to trigger thinking that has never happened in their brains before it's like the whole gun control argument which i tend to agree with if you think somebody else might have a gun you're a lot less likely to try to shoot them or rob them or something you know Hmm. and if you go to a gun-free zone i mean that's probably where you want to commit a terrorist act or or, that would be an interesting study um, looking at places that have gun control laws and observing well like this was last terrorist looting? attack was uh Paris. Well, it, no the one after that San Bernardino. San Bernardino yeah yeah but I mean it was a government office building I'll oh, yeah. I'll bet money that was a gun free zone even though it was a government you know it was a government thing so and, in, right in and the gun and the gun that was used was illegal there in that I, you know part of California but well, we should a, make stricter gun laws right. so that we conspir- can be safe, hey, just like France. It was a conspiracy. <laughs> it was a false flag. It was... I don't know about all that. I Lizard know. people. Lizard, Lizard people. people Illuminati. You know what? There saw, are, uh, a meme there are the, uh, real terrorists out the there sixth, who want to hurt people. The sixth I mean, sense kid going, all I see is false flags or something. It's kind of funny. Uh-huh. All white people. There, the thing white is, is did this. false flags are... Happen. I mean, our flags happen too, but our government has planned them. You know, perhaps the CJ that, uh, and, uh, oh, you didn't see Operation Northwoods. It was like we had the plans yeah. to to do all these false flags to go to war with Cuba, and mm-hmm. all our top, you know, the top military people in the country were trying to push this through with uh, Kennedy and stuff. Was that the Patreon episode? Operation yeah, Northwoods? yeah, it was well, really good. One. The most recent false flag that comes to mind is the. Um, uh, Worked for the, the Nazis. War, the war with Iraq, or uh, yeah, the second war with Iraq, the one under Bush. What was the they, false flag? Well, WMD. They, yeah, they sat there and said they got nukes, and then it's they, the same thing. Yeah, web. it's not really a false flag, but it is yeah, a, it is a false flag. It's 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 the same basic principle. It's the same. It, it is a it's a deception and a lie, but it's not quite doesn't quite fit. The, I don't know. I, I would say it's the definition a, of a false flag. It's, it's close enough for me, yeah, because right. it's so, basically yeah. if we don't stop them, they're gonna assertions. It was, yeah, definitely. It's a threat of a false flag. I mean, basically, they're saying if we don't go in there and get these WMDs, they're gonna come and Nuke kill us. all our yeah. babies. Or whatever. And you know, know, somebody pointed out to me recently, and I didn't even catch it at the time. That it is actually the 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 claim is actually disprovable on logic alone without evidence. What claim? The claim that Iraq had WMDs and that they were dangerous because they could use them. Therefore, the United States should go and attack them to take out their WMDs. It doesn't fit with logic because if they really had these horrible weapons that made them so powerful, it would be foolish to go and attack them because they would use these weapons... I think what they did was they changed the definition of what a WMD was. I think that happened later. Because yeah. now, if you get caught with a pipe bomb, you get charged with uh, having <laughs> WMD. It's called kid. Oh, really? Or it used to be <laughs> nuclear weapons. No, they were um, accusing Iraq of having nuclear and chemical biological weapons. They, I heard they, that they actually did have the chemical ones, but they were supplied by the U.S. Well, the chemical ones right. had been made in her years in advance. They had them, like you said, but not while they were being accused of having them. I don't know about that. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Whichever way you want to go on that question. (laughs) What was the question? 
WMD. <laughs> <laughs> WMDs. Or not to WMD. <laughs> that is the question. It kind of begs the question, well, if every country that possesses a WMD is a threat, doesn't that mean we should go after... Like, you know, well, the I, uh, U.S. is public enemy number one. George Orwell wrote this article, um, The Atomic Bomb and You, and uh, he posited or posed the, he said that, um, you know, if the atomic bomb had turned out to be as easy as like a bicycle or something to build, and everybody could build them, it, it could really change, you know, the world, you know, because... I mean, that's kind of like the theory behind anarchy is this, if everybody has power, it kind of keeps everybody else in check. Oh. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, if, if if you, that's kind of a tricky question. How do you deal with like atomic bombs, you know, or, yeah, or chemical weapons or biological weapons? Because we're getting into a, a, a an era of technology where anybody... Oh, it's what? Anybody can can kill millions of people by just you can go online supposedly and uh, you know make smallpox or whatever just no, by you, you can there? literally people went online and they made this they they literally built the smallpox virus from the information online. Really? Or well, what if you went and that. built a factory that huh. could crank out a hundred thousand drones in about three months? There's <laughs> and then just sent the whole fleet of them. Over. There's a lot of. There's, there's all a, kinds of crazy things people could do. There's a strong argument against all that, and that is um, maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance of a nuclear weapon is extremely expensive. And mind you, if there were theoretically, let's say, 100 DROs, who all maybe initially what's have a nukes. DRO? Yeah, what's a DRO? Dispute, Dispute Resolution. Resolution. Organization. I mean, for the audience. Okay. okay. I didn't know what you it was. You had to explain <laughs> Um, uh, it's like the concept of having okay, I remember now, but, um, a, an insurance company that defends you. That's what it comes down to. With the dispute resolution uh, organization. Yeah. yeah. So David the, Friedman talks a lot about those if you want to. The problem is, is that um, nuclear weapons, they tend to expire fairly quickly. Oh, I didn't know that. Because they can't, um, it has to do with radioactive decay. You can't keep plutonium for very long, and uranium doesn't make for a very good um, fission. You need a lot more of it, don't you? You need a lot of it, and it also decays just like plutonium. How do you know so much about this, Danny? Yeah. How do you know all about these new weapons? knowledge <laughs> 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 Well, yeah, I mean, if you really want to know, my parents forced me to read this crap when I was young. Oh, wow. Or should we call you oh. Ahmed? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the problem is nukes are extremely expensive oh, to maintain. And if you're a business and there's really no immediate threat of, um, you know, a hostile takeover in terms of land force, um, it's not viable to maintain such an expensive, uh, wasteful weapon that you're probably never going to use. And particularly given that if other people can use it against you, there's not much incentive to actually use it. Much like there's MAD in terms of countries, there would be MAD with um, these DROs. And there'd be probably a lot more DROs than there are countries. So basically what you're saying is the market will provide... The market would sit there and say this is a wasteful use of resources. That's why I would push the button. Because I believe that the market will provide the solutions or the, you know... So you're talking about, like, mad with a silent N on the end, mothers against drunk nukers? No, no, no not mutually that mad. <laughs> a different mad. Mutually assured destruction. Okay. It, it'd be... They, there's that some, would be if everybody was driving <laughs> drunk all at the same time. I mean, like, people don't understand that weapons, weapons are expensive to maintain. And to, even to test, like, right. even having a gun... A regular gun, if you're going to fire it off at the range, you're wasting bullets. Bullets aren't cheap. You're wasting um, uh, the, I um, can't think of it, the utility of the device because the thing heats up and it 
fractures and it breaks down over time. Weapons aren't, um, in general, an investment. Right, they consume. Uh, they, they're, they're, con- they're almost completely consumption. And nukes, they're at a much broader scale, a much bigger scale, much more expensive. There's not a lot of utility in actually having them. What do you think about that- one thing that concerns me is would be nuclear blackmail. You know, where if, say, we pushed a button in the United States, that's bad. was no more. That's, you're talking about mutually assured destruction. No, right? you pushed a button to, to end the government in the United States right now, and Russia, China, whoever, India, doesn't matter. Other countries Comes still in. existed, and they said... Uh, we're not going to take those guys over. They're crazy, but you know what? We're going to tax them. We're going to give them a, the, in order a nuclear f- bomb tax. We're going to say, okay, you give us whatever a uh, billion they can't. dollars in gold. They can't. The problem is, or we're going to blow up your this whatever thing, area we feel like. We're going to play Russian roulette and blow up one of your areas, and then they do. The thing with the- and then we say we get mad and maybe do some terrorist so-called attacks, and then they do it again. The problem is, is that. A, a lot of the terrorist attacks are guerrilla warfare. guerrilla warfare. They're asymmetrical in terms of information. So it took the United States, what, a few trillion dollars to maybe put a dent into Al-Qaeda? Maybe, maybe a dent. I don't and, think they put a dent. And Al-Qaeda was armed with... Because they just with, into ISIS. Yeah. Al-Qaeda was armed with what? Rush, you know... Russian surplus from yeah. 40 years ago. Um, I yeah. mean, like, the, the, the whole concept is everyone thinks that, oh, if we don't have a state to protect us, then other countries or warlords will come in. Yeah, and the implication by that is if you look at our, at the United States population, in general, as opposed to a lot of other countries, we're more heavily armed at the individual level certainly than most other citizens in other countries and i i really do like this quote from the uh, it was a japanese general and i'm it's prob- a fictitious quote by the way yeah i don't it think is. it's a real it quote is. it's from a movie it is, it is. yeah but okay. they were capturing a really good um insight good with, with the quote yeah, you know, and that, that's the quote with the um, blades of grass. Yeah, there's a rifle yeah. behind everybody. And I sit there, kind of like, and um, a few economists have made this point: you can't easily take over um, a nation or whatever the fuck you want to call it that has no central structure, because you don't know what the fuck the other what those people are armed with. Yeah. It's it's the equivalent of trying to destroy a forest. And you're the only person <laughs> in the force. Um, uh, Prof. CJ in the Dangerous History Podcast has a whole like five or six part series on fourth generation warfare, guerrilla warfare. Buper, it was really good. Yeah, and one thing he refers to it as is trying to shoot a ghost because you can keep attacking it, but it just disperses. When, More like a when, hydra. When when you try to shoot at it, you, you, you can't hit it really because. Did you see that? Uh, did you listen to that podcast? No. Do you ever listen no. to the Dangerous History podcast? Dangerous no. History not, podcast. I, yeah. I, I, we'll put that. We'll put that in the show I notes. You said date your sister. <laughs> <laughs> date your wow. sister. Wow, that, that, that's that, that's a whole other topic. There. Oh, Prof. CJ, what are you into, man? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are some anarchists that are. <laughs> no. I mean, well, John Black is in the art, yeah. but he was okay with fucking his cousin. Let's, I think let's, that's let's, the. Anyway, I think anyway. that's the. Uh, I think you have to be royalty to to fuck. So the bottom line, family member. The, the the bottom line is it's very difficult to attack and take out a whole um, culture of people that are armed. We um, we have the. Um, Evidence of Iraq and Afghanistan, especially Afghanistan, it's been attacked by the two major superpowers and also several other um, empires. And nobody can rule Afghanistan because the people don't want to be ruled and they're armed and there's no centralized military to fight. So push the button. Push the button. Maybe in (laughs) Afghanistan. I didn't hear your answer. What was your answer? Push the button or to not... 
to he's, push the button or not to push the button? Are you on the fence? On the fence, it depends entirely on what exactly happens when the button is pushed. <laughs> that's the, that's the <laughs> point no. entirely. The point is you the don't point know entirely. what's You don't know. The market will provide. Yeah, the market. Well, the market. To the market. To the market. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to go there. Look at this right. communist. <laughs> the communist is holding you I don't, I don't You know. said you wouldn't push the button. <laughs> I think we changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I, he agreed with us. I, I agree <laughs> in, in the context that um, I do think market forces would take over, but I, I am concerned that the same people who, who, who are entrepreneurs, in a lot of cases, tend to be kind of power hungry. Everybody's power hungry. That is very a very okay, scary power thing. Hungry, hungry. Bullshit. Power with. Power with. Oh, uh, oh. the the PC power term. With. Power with. It's not PC. I mean, I like to cooperate, work together voluntarily with other people, and yeah. and yeah, like synergy. I like to say I don't, I've never. I don't like to impose <laughs> my will on anybody else. I like to get people to come to my will, but I'm not gonna. Stick a gun to your head and make you do what I want. Fair enough. And and who do you have on your shirt, Katie? This is Voltrine Declare. Oh, Voltrine cool. Declare. Tell us a little. What, why are you wearing a shirt with Voltrine Declare on her? Uh, I know a Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no That's relation. Oh. No relation to Delilah. <laughs> have I declare? <laughs> yeah. Voltrine Declare. What's special about her that she's worthy? Of a T-shirt, she's pretty special. Yeah. I think I think she's pretty special. Yeah. Um, she she's a, a female anarchist mm. from the late 1800s who was born in Leslie, Michigan. Really, oh, local anarchist. Leslie, Michigan. Later where's, moved on to, where's Leslie, Michigan? On the that's old... a good question. And she later moved oh. on to St. John's, which is just oh, north Lord. of Lansing, and I think ended up in Grand Rapids. But don't oh, no quote kidding. me on that. Okay. So, so yeah, she was a prolific writer and um, was into this whole freedom thing, and uh, also had kind of a feminist streak and yeah. early, early mutualistic. feminist uh, streak, right? Right. First wave. This is a whole different right. kind which, of yeah. feminism, <laughs> which which goes into something that we we. Oh, we, <laughs> okay. I don't know how much time we have. <laughs> no, we watched this um, video earlier today. It was posted on Facebook by the Survival <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> oh, I forgot to watch that. You didn't watch it? Sorry. Oh, I saw that oh. It was called... Okay. What was it called? What, what do you got there? Leslie? Oh. It, South of what, Lansing, and then oh, she moved close. out, and then over to Grand Rapids. Yeah, it, she's a... You, I, I forget kind of what I read about her, but she's very interesting. It's very close to Gibraltar, apparently. Yeah, I had it here. I don't think so. Is it? It, it didn't look that close. Let me see. Like here to here. I love living in Michigan. I know, it's not a bad that, state. Other than, I'm like I'm trying to get 25 the miles the from Detroit. Nobody even knows where Gibraltar is. Okay, so what? Is that 20 minutes? I'll put the... No, no, from no. there to there, like an hour or something. Yeah, at least an hour. Hi, baby. Maybe an hour and 25 minutes. Oh. Right, yeah, yeah no. we're, we're we're getting off track here talking about where she's from. But um, the video from earlier today, edu, what was it? Uh, it was, it was a play on the word education. It was some play on the word education. No. Um, no. It was no. this guy, he's walking down the hallway. He goes into a classroom. It's an advanced math class. He sits down. The lady asks first question. What's one plus one? He says it's, he raises his hand. He says it's two. And she says, wrong. She didn't put it that way, but that's from Saturday Night Live sketch. Um, I should put that in the show notes. Sorry. Um, the, the answer was like Multicultural. multiculturalism. She says three times three is nine. The answer was uh, gender equality. Gender equality. Um, it's, it's, a whole bunch of social justice nonsense. She collects their their project, and um, he has the best project with a score of seven. The other ones had a score of six and five, and one had a score of one. And so he thinks he's gonna get to go to the um, the the math um, exhibit or whatever, where he gets to show off his skills of doing math. 
But she says, oh no, we're not done with this, um, with this process. She takes all of their scores, she averages them out, and then um, everybody gets a five, even though his was a seven, and his score is now a five. And then he says, so how are we gonna figure out who gets to go to the math thing? And then she brings out the, the um, privilege. Privilege, privilege points, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the girl gets a uh, plus one privilege point for being a girl and minus for being uh, white. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then she got a plus for being bisexual. And the one guy in there, he got all negative privilege points for being white, male, and cisgender. He ended up with one point um, when he was done, and he thought it was fair. They turned to the guy. <laughs> they turned to the guy who had the highest score of the seven, and. With his privilege points, he ended up with a five, and then they turned to this one kid who was a complete disaster. <laughs> he had like 13 privilege points. His paper just said equality on it, and it was spelled, spelled wrong. Correctly. <laughs> And that's what he gets to go present at the math place because he got the most privilege points. So he ended up with a score of 18 when he was done. And the, the guy who walked into the classroom with the score of seven protested he said it was stupid and he gets murdered he gets murdered <laughs> by the state or by the people in the classroom the class. and from the, from did they form a democracy first no. I, I want it to be fair <laughs> it was illegal for him to resist because it was a social justice death because he was wrong totally for, justified yeah feelings, Plus, feelings matter fe over logic feelings matter it's, over logic it's not a lynching if they vote me. on it it's really more talking about what's happening today, like on college campuses and the, um, the problems where kids are running into, they can't express, um, any opinions on anything or say that anybody's wrong or people have to go to their, um, yeah. safety is, places. Was it origins. Tom DeLorenzo? I think it was who did that. Um, he did that talk about, um, this one campus had a safe room. I'll try to find this clip. It was it was really hilarious. We can throw it in the show notes um, if I can mm -hmm. find it. But um, he was talking about Tom yes. Woods was about to give a talk, and um, the people were told that there was going to be a, a safe room where they could go. And in the safe room, they had like cookies and blankets and like other things, coloring cool. books. Kool-Aid. I mean, everything, like, it was just ridiculous. And, you know, that's one thing we didn't talk about in, in the, um, the video that started this, this conversation was um, they, they talked about their right to... Um, not be offended. Not, yeah, not be offended. Yeah, I think that so gets what, to and, the... And, and so what that's, I was describing was like, the origins of this, essentially, because yeah. that I later evolved into New Age, which evolved into postmodernism turned into the current PC culture. I, I think yeah. that boils down to the crux of why we consider ourselves anarchists. And people carry nation was for women's freedom, women's rights. No, everybody, no, but I mean, everybody is, people want to do, they want this or they want that and they want to they say they're for freedom, for equality, for whatever, but they're, they want to take, they want to force somebody to make them do there's what a, they want so they can be free. There's a perversion and, of the definition and, of freedom. Yeah, everybody, the government, everybody says we need to make this fair. We need to, we need, basically being fair is, is like freedom. Mm -hmm. In their, in people's minds. No, it's Making not. things fair is to be, to make freedom for people to do what they want but when you force freedom it's not freedom it's because it's it's perverted and you get all this crazy shit <laughs> it's not necessarily accurate i think here's the thing the left and the way i see the left and i've actually heard them say this is that uh Freedom to them is freedom of starvation, freedom of um, being homeless, freedom of um, dying. Yeah, dying. Disease. Freedom is scary. Yeah, freedom is um, 
anything that is something they don't have to work for. I'm, I guess what I'm saying is they may not call it freedom, but that's what they think that no, I, I, equal, I, they think of it as freedom as we would think of freedom. But yeah, freedom is scary. And I think to be, you, you know, you just got to let it all out, let it all just let everything happen. Let, let the, the chips let, fall where yeah, they may. Let the chips fall where they may. And anytime you try to control some, it's just going to fuck it up. Well, there was a uh, Andy, your friend, Andy. Uh, there was a woman. Uh, <laughs> all right, baby. It's just Joe Aria. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so. Andy replied to this uh, socialist uh, woman who had written on Facebook, um, someone like me, value, society doesn't value very heavily. I, I don't have a lot of utility. Something along those lines. And um, Andy tried to drag me and Ryan to it. I didn't want to deal with it. But uh, she basically outlined why society should protect her and feed her and shelter her. Oh, even this is my cousin's cousin. <laughs> and I sat there and I, I looked at him like, wow, you're kind of a dumb cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds and like something you would say. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> say, I mean, I didn't say this. I was really? Just, I, I just I'm read it. I just read it. I'm like, I'm disappointed in there you. Was a part of me, there was a part of me that. that was like, they're kind you of would, a dumb cunt. No, there was a part of me that was in there like, you would be food for maggots if it was pure survivalism. And that's where you should be. <laughs> like, like, she said, was she was an artist or some bullshit? No, uh, this might have been a different one. I'm not sure it's exactly. Not but any, anyways, look, it's, I have no problem with artists. I have a problem oh. with people relying on other people uh, to survive. And I, I, no, don't get me wrong. I understand, you know, family. I understand that. I get that. I have no problem with people relying on other people and other people supporting them. Just don't force. force Yeah, Yeah. and that's the thing. And and she was And the sense of entitlement. That's the thing. She was sitting there saying well, I think I I think people should support me because I'm a human being, and that's what's compassionate. And I sat there, and I, and I thought to myself, okay, here's the problem I have with, no offense, Katie, a lot of the feelers. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the sense of, where, where do you draw the line in terms of compassion? And force. That's a where lot I draw of, the line, force. And right. here's, here's the thing, is a lot of compassionate people uh, tend to veer on this side of um, altruism. And it really, really bothers me because it's basically saying that there is no such thing as uh, self-interest. My, uh, I had a friend a few years ago who sat there and said to me, altruism exists. Why do you think monkeys will drop um, fruit for elephants? And there's there's evidence of this, and I sat there and I said, "Well, much Maybe like like elephants, <laughs> much like I donate money to you know animal charities, it makes me feel good about myself." And he sat there and said, "I can't believe you're you're that selfish." Well, a hundred percent of everything everybody does is selfish. is selfish, and and that's the thing is like and people are it. oh not Katie. Yeah, Katie. <laughs> Not Katie. I'm so I full. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the or point... is done for your own self-interest, if, if you prefer to use that. Yeah, and that's the thing. is like people confuse... Like, I, I love it, and I, I've discussed this on Facebook when I, I sat there and said, you know, um, and people will, will sit there and say to me, oh, other people are not objects. They're not... Um, they shouldn't be commodified. And I sit there like, have you looked at your dating profile? Have you looked at what you say, what you want in a partner? You're basically describing a type of car. Yeah. 
and there's this really strong utilitarianism behind it. And I said, they're like, I don't think people are nearly as altruistic and well, people don't realize that they're altruistic for selfish reasons. They just, yeah, I think yeah. that goes right um, past them. It depends on how you, you start to get into semantics when, when you start thinking about the word altruism. 100% of everything everybody does is for their own self-interest, but... I would say self-esteem. Or, I think um, we should go into describing why that is. You Well, you can't do anything that's not in your own self-interest. Well, yeah. Otherwise, you would simply think, not you can't do it. All, I have a theory. Everything that you do under the assumption that you're doing something for somebody else is based on your interpretation of that person. I believe that all human action can be boiled down to our will to procreate, to, to yeah. get to get bigger, to be part of something, to grow. Get and bigger. in the broad no, in the broadest <laughs> in the broadest sense of the term, to grow. Everything that we do is to to be part of a group, we're oh, part of we're, we're part of lineage. each other. Expand so you give something and it makes makes you bigger. It makes you care. You know, it carries your. Who own. here likes to contribute? Like who mm. enjoys Depends. to contribute? We all depends on what you mean by contribute. I like to contribute. I, mean, I like to teach. I like to yeah yeah. I think I most people do to an extent to the point where it doesn't. As long as you're choosing to do that, right. not, so not even that. It, that is correct, but as long as it's it doesn't create a deficit within me, in yeah, terms of like money or time or stress or whatever. You don't give gifts. I give gifts. I donate, but that yeah. I don't consider it. If I donate money to a cause, I don't consider it a a deficit where I'm worried about it. Okay, so you're saying as long as it doesn't take too much. From you. you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of others. My, my, yeah. yeah, my my priority is myself and then someone else. So why do you give to someone else? Um, I don't really give to human charities. I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I give to animal charities, and my the reason why is I feel that. Um, Yes, I'm going to say, I feel. Uh, I feel that... I've known this all He's long. not a stone. <laughs> More like a rock. I'm going to bury you. I'm going to make you... I'm going to make sure I can deny you right. at some point. But anyways... You feel what now? Uncomfortable with his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The point is, I, I find other lesser intelligent animals uh, something to be more um, concerned with because they, they don't have the capability to as far as I can tell so you give to like Democrats <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel that dolphins really understand if if there is global warming the I don't think they understand it. if there is trash in the ocean I'm not sure that they fully understand it uh, I think it's sad how we treat a lot of less intelligent animals I like my dog for example she's she as far as I can tell she has post-traumatic stress disorder oh wow and she why don't you out. pull her into the shot so we, we can uh... are ya <laughs> I think that would be a good topic for are ya yeah uh, where do you uh, uh draw the line between well the question is what is giving <laughs> what is giving there to the is. animal charities do for you yeah. I, I I want them to have theoretically a better life. A better life. Why? Why? Because I, I don't my thing is with humans is that they a lot of humans, even though they are maybe not the most intelligent, they're fully capable and as capable are fully responsible for their actions. Animals on the whole run just basically on gut instinct. It just died. It just died? That's fine. The other dead. one's still going. So, we're... so you want to support someone who isn't able to support themselves? I, I have a lot more. As much because as a thing. Care? 
as much as I may make fun of retards and <laughs> autistics, I actually do feel really retards sim- are animals too, you know. Uh, no, <laughs> I do feel sympathetic. I I had a friend that was retarded for a long time, and I and then what, she got smart or what happened? <laughs> no, he he's still retarded. But oh. the point is, is that I sat there and I looked at him and I thought to myself, well. He's not fully cognizant of all of his actions, of all of his behaviors, and he's struggling to survive. I look at animals in the same context, but they have a much harsher life in terms of um, what is afforded to them in the natural environment. Humans, retarded humans, I would argue, tend to have a better life than even the most intelligent animal. I don't know about all that. Inside. More, I mean, if they live at. in a more comfortable and yeah, controlled it, 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 environment, yeah. if that's what you mean. If they have someone yeah. looking after them. Yeah. And even then, even a lot of the retards understand, to some level, personal responsibility. An animal, most animals, I would argue, you know, most, if not all animals, don't have a strong sense of self-responsibility. They act on instinct. They act on, I need to feed myself, but that's kind of it. Yeah. I'm noticing the time. Ooh, I think it's probably time to close up the uh, the video because Katie, Katie has to leave. Yeah. Yeah. The, the star has to leave. Us. Yeah. And, we uh, should um, we should get a picture before she goes for the uh, um, for the uh, cover photo. Okay. I'll need to do that. So go ahead and stop the video.